all. Thanks for coming to another Fusion Friday. My name is still Phil Brown, as always. Some have started to refer to me as Fusion Phil. I don't know where that comes from. But as you can see in the image to the side of me, today we're talking about how to utilize a joint origin for your work offsets. So if you're a master cam, maybe a power mill user, you're used to creating planes and work coordinate systems, this is going to help you out a ton utilizing the joint origin tool to set that. As well, we very much deep dive into how to use an origin to set your point of rotation in reference to your your parts, excuse me there, when you're creating your three, four, and five axis tool paths. So let's go ahead and jump in the software and see how this is done. So our first example here is going to be utilizing a joint origin to set our work offset. So very simply, if you've ever used Mastercam or PowerMill or any of the other softwares to create your origins, as well as your work coordinate systems and your planes, we can kind of do the same thing using a joint origin. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and highlight my face. This is going to give me top dead center, which is that little rectangle. And from here, I now have the ability to compensate that for whatever I'm going to do. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do the outside of this part. And I believe if I had to choose, we're going to go ahead and do the side holes and the face. And we're going to do that almost as if it's on a A-axis indexer. So we're going to bring this down. We're going to bring this over. And then we know we're offset from center where that part lies. Again, I'm not going to design up a super crazy fixture for this. I'm just referencing where I've touched off my part in reference to my actual coordinate system. So now that we have that point of reference, let's go into manufacture and set this up. So I'm going to create my setup. And my setup is going to be based off of my Z and X. Again, I want Z up. In this case, because the A axis, we want X to the right. And then I want to utilize a selected point for that origin. So just like that, I have actually set and compensated my part away and up from my A-axis center of rotation. Now, if I was to use a machine, in this case, let's use this VF4, because it does have just a, I believe it's an HRT210 on it. But I could manually compensate this, as you guys can see here, based off what's going on. But simply enough, because I've already done the math with the join origin, I could just use a selected point. And then it's automatically going to jump away and up again. Center of my indexer, off the face, X and Y, Z from the table type of scenario. So again, is now that we have that set, let's go ahead and throw a quick couple of tool paths at this. We're just going to face this guy off. In that case, I don't have a face mill in that machine. Let's go ahead and grab one over here from the Herco. And that's going to give us our facing operation. And then let's just say we're going to rotate down and do one real fast drilling operation, right? So again, we're just going to grab a spot drill. And we're going to do tool orientation. Z this way. Again, X needs to stay the same direction always. And let's just pick a couple of those holes, right? So in this case, we just want the actual chamfer to each hole. And we're going to say to chamfer width of 20 thou. So now looking at this, when we simulate it, what's going to happen is, is we're going to see that facing program come through. There it goes. And then we're going to move on to our drilling. So this is where our part is actually going to swing down. Again, everything is referencing this joint origin for our work offset. So this is a great asset when you guys are going through and setting your axis of rotation and not spending a ton of time making the most perfect jig possibly. You could actually do this very quick and there's no need for DFO and DWO. So let's look at another example, right? So in this case, we're going to go ahead and switch over to this cylinder head. As you can see, I already have my joint origin set. Again, the idea is, is this is on a horizontal type machine. That's our center of rotation. This is where our part sits. Again, we create that setup. We set our X, Y, Z. In this case, I want Z based off the front. I want my Y axis up or my X left and right. Again, as I could pull an edge for X. Now we are rotating around Y. Let's last shift it to our center of rotation on our pallet. So again, as we utilize the joint origin to move things around, again, I'm going to go ahead and just throw a simple facing tool path at this. 
And let's go into that Herco again. Let's grab that two inch face. And just like that, we're facing off that part. So let's look at this another way. So again, is let's bring in a little different machine. Well, this machine is going to be a head table machine that allows us to actually put the part again on the platter for spinning the part. So again, as we're going to utilize a selected point, and that selected point is going to be my joint origin. And just like that, you're going to see everything jump around. And the problem with this is right now is we told the software we wanted to do it on a horizontal. So we actually need our part pointed a different direction. So again, this is kind of something that you're going to get into more and more is our Z-axis wouldn't actually be out. Our Z-axis is going to be up. And then our X would be in reference to whatever direction we're working with. Again, when we go back to our machine system, as you can see, we are now vertical on our trunnion. And from there, we would be tilting down to machine this part. So again, let's go ahead and change this real quick in our design workspace. So again, we can go in, we can right click and edit our joint. We wouldn't be that high away from our part, but we may be out a ways based on that. And we're also off center. So the key element here is when you guys are doing this stuff and you're utilizing it is the ability to very quickly reposition your part without having to do a ton of extra systems. So again, as we're going to go ahead and simulate this, as you can see, this is a gigantic part. We failed to turn on tool orientation, so we'll do that this time. So let's go ahead and exit that simulation. Let's go to that facing cycle. And what we actually want is tool orientation. Again, we're going to pick our Z and our X. Just like that, it actually laid down our Z in a direction that I like. Maybe we'll do the backside here. Actually, that's not going to work because our idea is there's a tombstone in the way, right? So Z out. There's our facing cycle from the side. Again, we look at the machine simulation based on that. And what we're going to see is that part is now spun around. Our head is tilted to 90 degrees. And we're running our facing procedure all based on the fact that our part is not sitting on center. So one more time, this is a, another really neat trick that you guys are going to have is let's say we're doing a table, table, five axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two out of here. So you may get lucky and you may bolt this thing on perfect. It's not always going to happen, right? So if we don't have DFO and we don't have DWO, we may need to set this up a little differently. So again, as we're going to do our joint origin, and we're going to start from center. And let's just say based on a very small increment, we're a half inch off in two directions. I'm going to create a second joint origin. Same thing. Again, away, out. This time we're going to move up knowing that we are from the table to the actual rotation. In this case, this will be a B-axis rotation. The distance is two inches. So again, we're going to go in and we're going to create our setup. So let's go ahead and switch over to the manufacturer workspace. And in this case, we're just going to change this setup that we have here and set our reference points. So again, Z is up. X is whatever direction you want. In this case, we want our work offset to be this origin. And then we want to place our part based on our other origin location. So again, is we're now down and shifted away from center of that part so as you can see here is if we actually are to get the machine to be a little more transparent and we're going to look at this from the top down you'll see that we are shifted from center of our platter that half inch in two directions but it's not going to affect anything we do because we have that upper work offset right here set to center of rotation on the b-axis so again, is if you don't have DFO and DWO, this is how you could set up either a four axis or a five axis, or even use a joint origin for your three axis machines. So again, as we could get a little more technical with this guy here, if we were to really move it around, again, we're going to go back. We can edit either one of these joint origins at any time, and we could shift this way out and away. I'm not going to shift the other one, but the neat thing is, is as you're making those small incremental changes, again, we regenerate our tool path, and now we look at our simulation. You can see my actual part is way off to the side of the table, and my tool path is still following everything to do it. 
So I hope this is very helpful for a lot of you being able to use that joint origin as a more familiar method to work planes, um, as well as setting those and how you can reference those when referencing your part to center of rotation or even referencing your work offset back to the software. I love using joint origins. They also come in very handy if you're going to actually go out and export to Camplete. It's one of the features that are in the actual tool to export to Camplete. Thanks for your time. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Come by and take a class taught by yours truly on either April 13th or 14th, or even both days for that fact, or you could just grab a free lunch and say hi.